Why did silver rocket 6.5% gold to record high? Hi, everyone, and welcome to Ainsley Insights, brought to you by Ainsley Bullion, Ainsley Crypto, and the Gold and Silver Standard, as the Ainsley Group celebrates 50 years. Today, we welcome back Sam, who's been predicting the potential for, for some explosive moves higher in precious metals, and on Friday night, they delivered, especially with silver. How are you going today, Sam? Good, Chris. Good to see you. Good to see you. Now, you've been warning... Oh, not warning us, you've been sort of hyping us up that this was a possibility and sure enough, it's happened. So silver just had that spectacular rise on its last day of trading. What do you think caused it? There is the inflation news, which everyone's, you know, gotten around for the other precious metals, you know, such as gold. But one of the big things was news out of China. They've they've come out with a announcement of historic stimulus for the building industry. So they're they're trying to really prop up industry over there, and you know they've been doing a lot of stimulus as well. And uh, as as we're both aware, silver is an industrial metal, so that could um, you know that could be a huge amount of orders coming through for silver from China. So that's likely one of the things that boosted silver to such a dramatic degree, um, even more than gold. And you you've mentioned that in the past. It, it is really always so interesting with silver because it has that dual purpose. It's not just the monetary metal. It's also that industrial side. So if we start to see that industrial use coming on top, I mean, the, the sky's the limit in terms of the potential, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, you know, gold is used in industry as well, but not nearly as much as yep. silver. And um, of course, it's just slightly more expensive as well. <laughs> and so looking at the technical side of it, it seems like a fairly significant break that we've seen. How would you rate yeah. the significance of that breakout? Well, it's, I mean, we've we've seen silver go up to roughly $50 an ounce twice in the past. And this looks like, uh, I can't say for sure, you know, it's, it's potential third uh, rush towards that level. But the real significance is uh, 2020 gave silver a pretty good, pretty good boost. It was kind of like, um, you know, shocking it back to life and, and showing that silver can have that dramatic rise once again, that hadn't been seen in about a decade, but for the past three or four years, it's just been ranging pretty much sideways. So silver buyers have, you know, been, been kind of riding this slight roller coaster of just up and then back down, then up and back down. But Friday, what happened was it broke out of that range it's been stuck in for about three or four years. So that leaves a lot of big targets, uh, which are high above where you know silver currently is. So it's finally broken out of that range. It's it's been stuck in for years. And I'm, I mean, I don't want to be too sensationalist, but you, you, we've talked in the past, and uh, you mentioned it uh, from time to time, the 1970s and that sort of cornering of the market by the Hunt brothers and that it really created uh, that that spectacular spike that happened back then. Mm -hmm. Is this very different to that type of environment? Do you, do you see the potential that we have um, the opportunity for a, a mega spike to come out of this? Or is it is this just more of a, a build up over time of market conditions that are leading it this way? Well, we saw a similar spike again in 2012. So after the global financial crisis. And that was just basically people scared of too much money printing. Now, how is this situation that we have coming up towards the end of the year or throughout next year any different? Hmm. The only difference is they're probably going to have to print much, much more to get the same result. So um, I don't think it is really too much different from, from okay, the late 70s and the 80s. Okay, maybe it's a little bit different narrative, but then again, we're talking about people trying to corner the silver market. We had JP Morgan uh, last year buying a bunch of silver, so who knows? Maybe they're maybe they're the ones to try and do it this time. And it absolutely could be the case because we know the supply and demand fundamentals don't line up there at the moment. So mm. there's opportunity for that to happen and, and big players like to make free money if they can. But just turning the focus slightly to gold, we talked about gold last week and how it was sort of testing those all-time highs. Obviously, that's just been broken. Um, it's not much. We've talked about the industrial metal side just before with silver, but it's not so much that with gold. Do you think that market uncertainty and the upcoming inflation are really fueling that rise or is there more at play with the gold side of this as well? Definitely market uncertainty, pretty much anything 
you could highlight that's a reason for gold to go up is has been happening. Um, you have fear of inflation. You have uncertainty with the stock market. You have geopolitical risks happening all over the place. And um, this hasn't even hit the market yet, but um, just breaking news came out that the Iranian president was riding in a helicopter that that crashed. So, and then what's what's going to be, I'm not saying that there is, you know, an underlying story there, but we know there's been a lot of um, drama with Iran recently blaming, you know, attacks being, um, attacks being funded or supported by Iran towards um, Israel, for instance. So what's going to be the the underlying story here? Are there going to be fingers pointed at someone else? And this is the president of a country going down in a in a hard landing, apparently. So a lot of geopolitical risks happening and a lot of fear of inflation and just uncertainty that the stock market can keep going up forever. And I was thinking about that this morning when I when I heard that news about the, the president as well, that even if there is no more story to it, it's still by its very definition, involves uncertainty, doesn't it? I mean, you've got someone who's very influential um, in a very uh, fired up part of the world. So some, anything happening there is still going to create geopolitical risk. Yeah, I mean, if if a leader of a country's lost, that leaves a power vacuum as well and a lot of scrambling in the midst of a situation where they've been uh, launching missiles and, and drones at Israel. So they would need to quickly... Get something together and it could be an opportunity for a more um i guess more aggressive or who knows uh what kind of new leader but maybe mm. looking too far ahead yeah and it's all speculation at this stage but certainly it's the, the type of news that can um, propel precious metals higher that's for sure one final question just this idea that we've been talking about today with gold and silver looking at them as as different approaches to the same problem, but also that industrial side, all of that tied in together. What do you see as the relationship between silver and gold prices going forward? Is it likely that they continue to move in tandem? I mean, I tend to be of the opinion that that silver um, tends to have that rocket higher later in the cycle, but seems to be moving a little bit earlier than I would be expecting in terms of outperformance of gold. How do you look at the play between gold and silver specifically when you're thinking in terms of price and an investment opportunity between the two metals? Well, um, I always explained to my clients, um, silver and gold kind of like, a, it's kind of like a, a big horse tied to a little horse with a bungee cord. One takes off, you know, gold is the big horse. And then once it gets far enough away, it launches the other one uh, ahead. And then eventually it comes back. Now, silver going ahead, sooner than usual i guess the other thing you have to deal with is gold is at all-time high gold's getting more mm -hmm. expensive and central banks are trying to buy up all the gold as well so that just leaves limited options for um you know for other investors and that's uh something that's happened in the past as well you know that's what um that, that was a big uh, issue in early america when the banks were buying up all the gold and not leaving any uh, investments for the regular people they all went towards silver and made the silver price pump up so it could be people desperate to escape inflation as well uh, potentially squeezing the silver price and sending it up because gold's just getting um, very very expensive it might just be because it's a monday morning but i'm just going to have the visual of a large horse and a small horse <laughs> bungee attached and running along stuck in my head all day so thank you for that i'll uh... <laughs> It's a, it's a great visual to leave that on. Um, thank you for your work on that today. Lots to look at and pay attention to with the gold price and the silver price rocketing along or being bungeed along behind it. So thanks for your work, Sam. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll chat again soon.